Hi guys, how are you doing? This is Sebastian from Tech Century, and welcome to a new episode of my popular video series, What to Buy. Today we are comparing the 13 and 15 inch versions of the Apple MacBook Pro with Retina display to find out which machine is the right choice for you. So to start off, of course, there are a lot of similarities. So first off, we have the same design on both machines and also the same ports. And these are a lot more ports than you would find, for example, on the MacBook or the MacBook Air. So we'll find an SD card reader, two USB 3.0 ports, two Thunderbolt ports, an HDMI port, one MagSafe connector, as well as a combo headphone and microphone jack. On top of that, we also get the same HD FaceTime webcam, a full-size backlit keyboard that lacks a number pad, the force touch trackpad, as well as a high resolution IPS retina display. Now the resolution is slightly different on these two versions, but the PPI, so pixels per inch, are very similar. So you get high quality displays on both machines. And it's also possible to hook up to two external monitors to these MacBook Pros. But now we'll get to the interesting stuff and these are the differences. Of course, the first one being the price. Now we're just taking a look at the entry level configurations and the 13 inch currently starts at 1,299 US dollars and the 15 inch from 1,999 US dollars. So big price difference there. Of course, there are also big difference when it comes to size and weight. So the 15 inch offers a 15% larger diagonal than the 13 inch but up to 34% more screen real estate. So if you're doing tasks on your notebook where you need a lot of screen real estate, then the 15 inch is of course the better choice for you. And in terms of weight, we are looking at 1.58 kilograms on the 13 inch versus 2.04 kilograms on the 15 inch. So the 15 inch MacBook Pro is roughly 30% heavier than the 13 inch version. That being said, both notebooks are fairly light. Another difference where actually the 13 inch shines is that the 13 inch MacBook Pro offers up to 10 hours of battery life when web browsing, while the 15 inch only offers 9 hours. Moving then on to storage, this is where the 15 inch is in the advantage again because the 15 inch entry level configuration offers 256 gigabytes of flash storage, while the 13 inch just comes with 128 gigabytes, which is fairly limited. Now the biggest difference between these two machines is of course the performance. First up, the 13 inch Retina MacBook Pro only comes with eight gigabytes of RAM, while the 15 inch offers 16 gigabytes. So multitasking, especially when you're using apps like Final Cut Pro for video editing and Photoshop for photo editing, then 16 gigabyte is definitely a worthwhile upgrade that you can also of course optionally do on the 13 inch. And the performance is just much higher on the 15 inch version. When we take a look at the processors, the 13 inch comes with a 2.7 gigahertz Intel Core i5 5257U dual core processor, while the 15 inch comes with a 2.2 gigahertz Intel Core i7 4770HQ quad core. And in general, this means that the 15 inch MacBook Pro offers roughly 90% faster performance based on Geekbench and other user data due to the quad-core architecture, higher turbo clock speed, and more L3 cache. Similar advantages, while not this significant, can also be seen when we take a look at the GPU. So the 13-inch MacBook Pro comes with the Intel Iris HD 6100, while the 15-inch comes with the Iris Pro HD 5200, and the Iris Pro outperforms the Iris in the 13 inch MacBook Pro by roughly 20 to 30% depending on which benchmark you look at. I looked at uh, the 3D Mark Vantage and it's also possible to get a dedicated GPU, the M370X on the 15 inch MacBook Pro, but that's even more expensive. So if you're just looking at the entry level configurations, the 15 inch outperforms the 13 inch by roughly 20 to 30%. So now it's already time to come to my verdict because this is all I have to say in terms of really differences. Personally, I had the 13 inch MacBook Pro for a very long time and I always felt like it has the perfect size and form factor. It's incredibly portable, has a great screen, a great connectivity, great keyboard, build quality and more. But Ever since I started to doing more intense tasks, for example, like video editing and photo editing, I've really come to appreciate the 15 inch MacBook Pro also with the 
just plus in screen real estate and of course also performance. And due to the fact that the 15 inch Retina MacBook Pro is now also quite thin and light, it's also great to carry around. So it really depends on your uses or what you need the machine for. If you need a more individual help here on deciding which machine is the right one for you, then just let me know in the comments below and I'll gladly help you out. And also let me know what other what to buy videos you wanna see in the future. I can't wait to hear your comments and to see your feedback. If you like this video, please make sure to like it as well as subscribe to the channel for many more videos. Thank you for watching. See you next time.